What is Dr. Steve Lawson's view on assurance of salvation as it relates to moral failure? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you. On September 19th, the elders at Trinity Bible Church in Dallas announced that uh, the pastor, Dr. S Steve Lawson, was being fired over an inappropriate relationship he had with a woman. On September 20th, uh, Luke Daly, who is himself uh, a Calvinist, explained why he felt that Dr. Lawson's fall is very ironic because four years ago, Dr. Lawson talked about a leading pastor he was having to speak at the Master's Seminary who fell. And if you get a chance to listen to the whole daily uh, podcast, but I've just got a two minute clip. And Brian, if you would play clip number one. C. Lawson just said, he handpicked the cream of the crop. He handpicked the best of the best. And he chose this guy to come in and give a lecture in this class. And then he gets an email from the elders that he was stepped down because of sexual immorality. Sounds pretty similar, right? Didn't we just read a church statement, a church announcement from elders about another person and inappropriate relationships? And then Steve Lawson here sat down with all of his 80, let's just say 80 doctorate students, and he listed it out, and he's making this guy sound this big. This big. And this is my problem. This is my problem with this reformed circle that we have going on today. This really popular reformed circle. They say that they're better than everybody else. And then when one of them falls, they immediately throw them to the dogs, belittle them. They're not pastoral, right? This is, ex this is from his mouth. This is what he did. His guy that he handpicked fell into sexual sin. And rather than being there with him and helping him, he went to that class in front of those 80 doctorate students and belittled them. Call him the fool of fools. And now here he is. This was four years ago when this video was uploaded. And here he is today, today, in a very similar situation. So, according to Steve Lawson's own words, it seems like he is the fool of fools. Now, I agree with Luke Daly that we should f feel compassion on all who fall. Now, my purpose in this video is not to discuss Steve Lawson's fall. My purpose in this video is to discuss Steve Lawson's understanding of assurance of salvation, and in particular, how it would relate to someone who is a professing Christian who experienced a major fall. So I've picked uh, a number of very short clips, like 30-second clips from uh, Dr. Lawson. And the first one is one in which he was talking about young men and lust and the need to fight lust so that you don't end up going to uh, hell. If you would, Brian, play clip number two. I think uh, a lot of young men fight pornography and they excuse it. And Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to stumble, meaning to look on another woman with lust, Jesus was so radical, he said, rip it out mm. and throw your right eye away. It would be better for you to re pluck out your right eye than for you to go to the fiery hell. Mm. In other words, you're going to hell mm. if you don't repent. You, you are showing me you're not even a true believer. Now, Dr. Lawson there said that the person who falls into sexual sin is, quote, not a true believer, unquote. But he also said that, quote, you are going to hell if you don't repent, unquote. Those aren't quite the same thing, are they? 
But in any case, he's suggesting in this clip that someone who falls into sexual sin is probably not born again. Now, I've got uh, a number of other sh short 30-second clips, and all of those clips are from one message that Dr. Lawson gave two years ago at Trinity Bible Church in Dallas, talking about assurance of salvation. And in the first clip, he's talking about false gospels, false saving messages. If you would, Brian, play clip number three. Agonize to enter through the narrow gate. There's no easy believism. There's no cheap grace. It is the most monumental experience of a person's life. And you must agonize to enter into the kingdom of God. Now note here he is rejecting what he calls easy believism or cheap grace. Uh, Dr. Lawson is a noted Lordship Salvation proponent. He believes in order to be saved, you must turn from your sins, commit your life to Christ, and follow Christ. You will not prove to be a true believer unless you persevere to the end of your life in faith and good works. And like most Calvinists, Dr. Lawson believes there are three ways that a person has assurance. One is the objective promises in the Bible. Two is the inner witness of the Spirit. And three are the works that we do so, so that we are to examine ourselves to see if we are truly saved. Now, Brian, if you would play clip four about the promises in the Bible. So I, I can't tell you if you're saved or not saved. If you tell me you've believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, I can tell you on the basis of your faith in Christ, you are saved. But I don't know if that's true saving faith or if that's a faith that's less than saving. Well, the problem with what Dr. Lawson is saying here is that if you profess to believe the promises uh, concerning whoever believes in him should not perish but has everlasting life, he would say, well, then you're born again if you are a true believer, but he doesn't know if you're a true believer or not. You see, for Calvinism, there's faith and then there's true faith. And the only way you know you have true faith is by looking at the other two means of assurance. So let's look at the second means of assurance that Dr. Lawson talks about, and this is the inner witness of the Spirit. Brian, if you would, play clip number five. Let me add one more footnote. I cannot tell anyone in this world that they're saved. Assurance of salvation does not come from a preacher. It does not come from a parent. It does not come from any person. There's only one person who can give you assurance of salvation, and that is the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 and verse 16 tells us, and later in 1 John chapter 3, that the Holy Spirit, it's an inside job. I don't know anyone's heart. Now, there's two major problems here. The first major problem is Romans 8.16 is not talking about assurance of salvation. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit bearing witness to our human spirit, but with our human spirit. And if you look at it in context, every time we pray, Abba, Father, there are two witnesses of the fact that we are indeed a child of God. Both the Holy Spirit and our human spirit witness to God the Father that we are children of God. But we can't feel the inner witness of the Spirit or our human spirit testifying to the Father. And this is really assurance about prayer. This isn't about assurance of salvation. It's assurance that when we pray, God hears us because both the Holy Spirit and our human spirit bear this witness. But the second problem with loss and citing this inner witness of the Spirit is it's a feeling at best, and feelings fluctuate. And so what happens after a person 
has an inappropriate relationship with a woman and gets fired from their church. Wouldn't that tend to cause your feelings to fluctuate? Wouldn't that tend to make you doubt your salvation, especially if you believe the fifth point of Calvinism, that only those who persevere in faith and good works are going to get into the kingdom? Well, let's look at his third basis of assurance, which is looking within ourselves, looking at our works. Brian, if you would play clip six about the need for self-examination. So, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not perform many wondrous works in your name? And I will say unto them in that day, Depart from me, you who work iniquity. Well, by his own words, Lawson would say that he needs to examine himself to see if he's in the faith. And I assume after this incident, he would have to conclude that it's at least possible that he's not in the faith because he just had an inappropriate relationship with a woman. Now, let me be clear. I am not suggesting that Dr. Steve Lawson is an unbeliever. I'm not suggesting that Dr. Steve Lawson is unsaved. I think... Most likely, earlier in his life, he believed what he now calls easy believism or cheap grace. In other words, I think it's quite possible that before he went to theological education, that he believed in the message of John 3.16, that whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. And that later on he bought into lordship salvation and he lost his assurance. But either way, Steve Lawson should not doubt his salvation because he had an inappropriate relationship with a woman. You see, the basis of assurance should have nothing to do with our feelings, and it should have nothing to do with our works. It should have nothing to do with our sins. John 3.16 is real clear. The Lord Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. Whoever believes in him. There's nothing in John 3.16 about behavior. John 3.16 doesn't say anything about subsequent sins we might commit. It doesn't say anything about an inappropriate relationship with a woman. John 3.16 is absolute. The moment we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation, we are secure forever. That's truly good news. So what is Dr. Steve Lawson's view on assurance of salvation as it relates to sin? Major sin should cause us to doubt our salvation, he would say. But that's absolutely wrong. Don't look within yourselves. Don't examine yourself to see if you're born again. Instead, examine yourself to see if you're walking in the faith. That's what Paul is talking about there. Examine yourself to see if you're approved. Go to faithalone.org and look at an article I've written on 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 7. If you liked what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus. I love you guys.